Okay, so um, I'm gonna. The first thing is to add a camera. You just add a cam. So what we are going to do today? So let me show you. Um, I add a camera. So that's the first thing that we do. So what was the cell phone that you used? Can you let me know? Just, just read the name for me. Sony, uh, which version? Xperia. Xperia. So we, 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 the reason is we need to know what is the, the lens in, in this camera. So Sony Xperia XZ sensor size or lens information. So you will see that so we're going to use those information so camera so inside the camera so that it says about the camera where's where's the camera information camera information okay let me pause the video okay so i found the camera information so it is a one on a 2.3 inch camera and the lens is 24 millimeter so we have to figure out what is sensor size what what is this sensor size so the sensor size of one on yeah that's one on 2.3 i have to it should be something like one on so that's the sensor size okay i found the sensor size the sensor size is 6.17 by 4.55 so that's the sensor size so i i I say my camera that my camera the film back information is there is a, a camera aperture in millimeter so I just like use the same information 6.17 by 4.55 so and the and the lens was 24 so and I looked through this camera so you see this camera looks oh that's a very different uh, so if I add an object and that that doesn't look um, natural to me Let me let me put the camera back to uh, what it was. So I just use a 24 millimeter lens camera. Yeah, that looks more natural to me. So I just look through the camera and then go to the view image plane, import image. And then I go to the UK drive where, where the image is saved. Okay. Um, the point is that the image sequence. I just I have to reformat uh, the image sequence in After Effects. So you know that you see that name is sequence. There should be a dot here. Maya is so stupid; it cannot load the image sequence without that dot. So I just do it in After Effects right now. So just import the image sequence quickly uh, from the same spot. Student sequence, the image sequence got more imported. Okay, um, bytes, yeah. 
So this is the image sequence. What I do, I just uh, export it again as a JPEG sequence. The quality is not important because you will use uh, uh, the 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 actual film for for exporting. And I export it into the same spot. Call it sequence. And yeah, you see that the sequence underscore blah blah and dot JPEG. In, instead of underscore, I add dot. And then I render it. Uh, there's a black at the beginning. I just um, I just cut that black from the very beginning. I start from here, so just like move everything back. So there should be no black. Uh, maybe just in case to save time, I start right away from here around so I press B and then uh, until here and I press N and then I right click here and then trim and then uh, go to here maybe control M again JPEG sequence as we said you can export as PNG sequence as well but I just export as JPEG just for the sake of speed um, inside sequence just dot sequence sequence and, it, and render it quickly so when I go to Maya while it's getting rendered if you see that if I point to the to the new address if I point to the new address where it is uh, just go to the K drive again students sequence sequence oh. Yeah, there it is. You just select the first file, open, um, and then uh, it starts at frame 40. So that's why you just press uh, image sequence, and then nothing happens until frame 40. But if you want to move everything back, you just type here 40 frames or minus 40. So everything starts from, oh no, 40, 40. So everything starts from, <laughs> 41 maybe. Anyway, we can start the animation from 40. But we'd better start from zero, from 1. I just want... Okay. So, that's the position of, of everything. So, he comes here and he bangs on the table. And the table smashes. So, what we have to do is uh, we have to bring the, the, the table in. So they did a very nice modeling of the table. I'm gonna import it as well. Um, so there's a table here. I import it as FBX. Then I 
So I so instead of uh, rotating the object around, I I move the camera around. So I position the camera in a way that it matches with the table. You can use uh, press five and click outside and go to the shading and X-ray shading. That's a good way of like yeah. It's not hundred percent. It's a bit thicker than than the table. But that's that should be fine. I just select the lower part. I go to the perspective. I select I select the lower part. Uh, how how should I select? I go and do, select everything here. Go to the uh, control and then two faces and faces. And then go and then I hold control and deselect that part. So I just like selected everything there. I press W and just like move this up until it reaches. Okay, that's fine. Now we have the table aligned, kind of. The the table, the base should be aligned as well. Maybe slightly thicker. Okay, so now we have a like an standing object. Let's rotate it until that little bar reaches that likeness as well. Okay, good. So the standing object is kind of looks like well, the, the object that is there. So uh, what, what we can do, so all these joints, uh, because they are separated from each other, so the, the mesh is not does not have enough uh, complexity to be broken. So what I do here, I just like add some uh, divisions, just like modeling, uh, mesh, or well, edit mesh, add divisions, um, maybe two level. Oh, that's too much. Yeah, one is enough. Or no, two, basically, two here. And uh, for that as well, two level here. Let me turn off the X ray. Yeah. Well, that's too dense. Uh, I'm going to add a, a bunch of edge loops here. One, two, th three. So. I had a question that how we can add edge loops like exactly same edge loop. So I just double click on edge loop tool, uh, multiple edges, like let's say six one, and then just bang, all of them are added. So yeah, I instead of adding more complexity, I just add some edge loops. But these ones, these like simple ones, I think we need to add some divisions for them. I just add one level of divisions which is fine all good uh, I delete all the history alt shift D or go to the edit delete by type history and then I uh, we don't need all of these so it's called table and I ex oh it has some textures I believe um, would you mind please uh, Copy the texture into the same place. Okay. So I uh, just use the same texture as what your friend did. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the texture on the table. Um, I just use a Lambert one for now. Just convert it to the Lambert. All good. Okay. So when we look through the camera, 
It kind of looks like what we have over there. So, okay. Um, so the table is there. I just export the table as an FBX. Just let's 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 start breaking it apart. I just make a new project. <laughs> set a project uh, we have a rigid body one here I just set it there make a new project as select uh, create a default workspace over there and then export it as a export selection as an FBX into the rigid body folder and as an FBX because I want to transfer textures as well, so FBX is a good... Where is it? Where are you? So if I just go... Make sure that the FBX is loaded. FBX... Yeah, it's loaded. Why? I cannot see. Export selection and then... Um, Yeah, there it is, FBX export. I just call that inside the rigid body and I call that uh, table. And inside Houdini, we just like add a geometry. And then I bring in the table. Uh, so just get in, so I just call that table. I just get into that. Um, we have to have a timing uh, so I go inside Maya so I add like I can use a sphere so I just add a sphere and with low resolution so I'm, I'm making a low resolution a sphere like um, instead of so like 8 by 8 sphere and use that sphere as a so I press S maybe shift S shift W to just keyframe the, the transformation so this is like hand standing so this is gonna uh, play so you see that um, and also the tangent should be <laughs> linear for now because so I go one two three in three frames it hits the, the table so the place it hits is somewhere around there based on the camera yes I can I can make a so like this can be like yeah I can place it properly so it hits so it hits the table tangent linear in that spot so it's good to have that exported as well so I, I export both of them so I export um, selection again and I call that table and hand and inside Houdini so how, how can you can import it you just like go to file import Finbox FBX and point to the place that the file is saved so the file is saved here and just I import that import so we have our table and we have the sphere as well and the sphere hits the table in three frames somewhere around oh did I import the animation yeah so the animation is imported as well uh, so let's let's uh, start and see how we can make a breaking apart effect in Houdini. So, um, 
so how we can shatter it apart? The first of all, uh, let's get into details. So this is the table that we have. It has two Lambert material assigned, which is fine. Um, so, so this is how you 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 break things apart. So I add a. Um, so I need. The, I'm gonna do this on, on something else so you would see so I'll add a sphere here um, and this sphere is like a polygon mesh so just look at that sphere I'm gonna uh, break it into different parts um, the, the note that you use for, for shattering for, for creating a fracture is Voronoi so you just add a Voronoi, Voronoi fracture, but Voronoi fracture doesn't work on its own. It needs it needs some more information. Let's say it needs. So I add it needs some dots to work. So I add a scatter here. I connect the scatter to that Voronoi fracture. To to I connect the sphere to that scatter. You see it creates a bunch of points. So let's say hundred or let's say twenty points. You see that, but the points are all around around the object. They are on the surface of the objects. What would happen? So this is what would happen um, if I start fracturing using this. Um, I just like let me visualize that. If I press W, you will see the problem. They are all fractured towards the center, the center. So like every one of them, if I just add a explode view, explode view. So I press W again. You see that they are all like, uh, they're all, it seems that they are, the, the fracturing has happened from the center because the points were all in the surface. But we can do something, I can add an ISO offset here so what this ISO offset does so it turns your object into a fog a volumetric object and then when the volumetric object gets scattered we have points inside your volume as well so then the fracture will you see that is even the, the some pieces inside that gets fractured so I delete that one for now. So that's why I start adding inside. Go, getting, let's go into the table. I, in, in, I add a volumetric object here. And I call that ISO offset. And I call, you can call that convert to fog. So you see that this table gets converted into a fog, into a thick fog. So that fog will be used for uh, generating some dots. So you, you type scatter and some dots gets generated. So let's say 100 dots. And then you add a Voronoi Voronoi fracture <laughs> this is gonna be the second one and the first one is that one so Voronoi fracture needs two inputs the object and the uh, and some dots so if I visualize that you see that the Voronoi fracture just works very nice here it just fractured everything into pieces so I go to the shatter and I make more like let's say 500 pieces but the point is the fracturing is very very um, like distributed evenly everywhere but what mean what I need I need that the fracturing just happens in, in that part where, where his hands smashes onto the desk so that that's the place that most of the fracturing should happen so I just like if I just add 10 parts you see that they are all so let's say we want some very large uh, 
pieces like these large ones but that part we need lots of tiny pieces so that's why I start paint my objects so I just type here paint click here and I drag from the object that I had <coughs> I go to the paint and I and I type um, and I go to the paint attributes so one of uh, the the setting for the window in, in Houdini that I like is you just hold alt and click here and then swap those two as well in the middle so yeah this is it is is much easier to work with so you have your uh, tree view here and you have your attributes over there so let's go so paint background paint black and I apply to all so everywhere gets black foreground paint you can use white so I, I start painting on the object So I just press enter, uh, the object, press enter, and then when you press enter, it gives you this little tiny uh, brush. You just go to the brush, make it larger, large enough, maybe more, maybe more. Oh, that's, yeah, that's enough. So I just paint under the place that it gets hit by his hand. So this is the place that we like to to break it apart. Maybe underneath as well. And then some some part of the uh, the table as well. It's good. Okay. Now I scatter the paint. So you just type scatter and then inside scatter you see lots of points. But they are black and that that part is white so you can just click on the density attribute and just type here instead of uh, density just say I'm gonna load the color data CD color data is um, C capital C um, lowercase D is for loading um, the, the, the color data you see that all those whites are get loaded so we don't need thousand well let's let's keep it a thousand and then we can combine these two together so I can add a merge and one from here one from here and then from here so you see that let's go back to Voronoi let's wait so you see that beautiful so you see that here when he hits the table lots of little tiny uh, pieces gener gets generated and the further back it's uh, they are large so okay the table is uh, generated so now it's time to convert it into something breakable so it's it has already broken but it's not dynamic so you can select your table and say that this is a rigid body so if I press this is a rigid body it just calculates everything so you see that it's just like working okay so when I play it just falls there's nothing to stop it so that's why we add a go to the collisions we add a green plane uh, sorry ground plane the ground plane is here but you see that there's an intersection between your ground plane and uh, the the tip of the table so I just move that ground plane down a bit until it just reaches underneath okay so you see that now it starts shattering apart and falling on the floor so the table starts like breaking apart like that and just falling on the uh, on the floor but that's not how it's supposed to behave uh, it is supposed the, the table is supposed to to stay there and 
So it is a pre-broken table at the moment. It's just very broken. So it's just like so we don't need we don't want it to to um, be broken at the beginning. Let me just like f adjust this part one more step here, yeah, just tiny little. Yeah, that's it. That's better, much better. So what you can do is just select your table. Go into uh, select your table and say that this is inside rigid body. You say that. I'm going to glue my rigid bodies. So this is say RBD glued objects. If I click on that, uh, it says that it's already um, been simulated. So you have to start with that one early on. So what I can do is just click on that glue adjustment and select the table and press enter. Uh, some glue constants are added so let's do that again one more time so what you have to do is just select your table um, press glue adjustment and then press enter so you see that some new nodes are added this glue constraint uh, is added and that's what uh, keeps so inside your auto dot net dot network a glue constraint is added so when i play it uh, you see that they are like kind of like glued together so they don't break easily it's kind of there's like a glue on every one of them so what you can do you can make make this glue much more uh stiffer like add one zero on, to, on the end of it you see that it stops it just doesn't do anything until the gravity starts and adds more so it doesn't do anything so I'm gonna bring this the moment that he hits the um, the, the table backward so we would don't wait too long so at the moment the animation is on that and the animation is like from frame 61 to 68 to 71. So the animation just happens there. So what I want to do, it's basically in three frames. So this is where it hits. So I'm gonna use another method you know I just I don't use this hand in I just want to know where where it lands so it lands on this purple one uh, yeah I can I can basically uh, remove the keyframe so, so I hold alt and click here so what happened hey Houdini oh there it is okay um i just can't go and say um, channels and keyframe remove keyframe control left click control click click oh where it went. okay so basically i have to go and remove this keyframe control uh control click 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 yes this is where it lands so i go there and i just control click and so i removed all the keyframes so this is where the in a ball should hit so i can use the same object basically because it is so i just duplicate that one control c control v so I, we have two of them and I use one of them for smashing into objects so this is just a, a box a, a, a sphere so I move it up I add transform I move it up like here and the simulation should happen in three frames so in, in three frames it should bang smashes there 
maybe I make it slightly larger okay so now it's time so I I call that one as hit object okay this hit object is is there and and I select it and I say that this is a this is an RBD object you can use the RBD hero object or this RBD object which creates a, a bullet object I will talk about what is the difference between uh, Houdini RBD or bullet simulation later on. so I just select the RBD object and um, so it gets turned into a, a new thing so you see that two nodes are added a rest and a dop import and inside our dop net auto dop network uh, you see that hit object here added you can select that one and say that that hit object would have an initial velocity what is initial velocity uh, so this object at the moment does nothing and just falls by gravity but I can say that instead of gravity so it just falls on the negative y direction so so if you just look at these um, look at these um, coordinates you see that one the, the from top is y and we want it to fall down so we just can add a velocity of minus let's say 50 so that's a very strong force at the beginning so let's play bang So I'm gonna hide the objects so we get into that so we don't need the the standing object so I'm gonna hide that so let's see if the hand works fine or not Okay, um, what do you think? I think these are too small, the pieces. Um, what I go, I just get into table. Um, let's go back to the beginning. And I go to the, this scatter here. So you see that there's lots of dots here. So inside this scatter. So this is the beauty of working procedurally because uh, everything that we've already done has a node so we just go and find that node and adjust it so I, I don't need thousands of um, dots I just may want 400 so let's wait until yeah this is let's see how, how this one works yeah wow this is this is cooler <laughs> I'm gonna turn off the uh, the Voronoi visual so we see without okay so I think we are happy with that simulation so now it's time to export it we just go here uh, we want to export that one so wh what we can do we can go and here export export to um, again in FBX or Alembic I export it as Alembic uh, I just f so I export it into the same file so I call that Alembic from Houdini accept and the file name is table destruction accept 
Okay, export uh, current frame? No, I'm gonna export the frame range. The whole um, 240 frames. Um, yes, all good. Export. Let's wait. So when you press export, a a process like this starts. So it's just like it's kind of like rendering, but it's basically creating uh, the Alembic files inside that folder, inside. Where are we working? Uh, inside. Oh, I, I think I exported in on, on my own computer. So I exported into uh, documents, Maya, projects, rigid body, Alemic from Houdini. Yeah, that's the destruction. You see that it's 260 giga, uh, megabytes file. So it's, it's a large file. So when I get into Maya, I just import that Alembic from Houdini destruction. Oh, oh! So it does. It says it doesn't recognize that because you should have gone to the cache, Alembic cache, import Alembic, and import it from here. Why it doesn't see that one? So the reason that it doesn't see the Alembic cache, it's because uh, it's my bad. Because when I was going to export, you just make sure that you add that Alembic. So I named it, but I forgot to add that like dot .abc at the end. Don't forget to add that dot .abc. So I just go and do it manually on, on, hard, on the file. So I just select it, press F2 and that ABC at the end. Okay, so it's inside Maya now. Let's wait until it gets loaded. Okay, it's loaded. I'm gonna save this project first. It's bad boy version one. <laughs> So, okay. So you see that it's it's loaded the the Alembic one. So the Alembic file is loaded and the animation. Do you see that works very nice? It's matched with the object. So what you have to do, you just have to apply the same texture that you had on this onto that one. So what we had here, so we had Lambert two and three. So I go to the beginning. So I move this table. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, modify and uh, freeze transformation. So when I move this around, and uh, so I would have, I know that on zero zero it returns back to its own space. So that one. So I just apply. Uh, okay, I go to the hyper shade. Um, I just drag and drop this onto that. Okay, and maybe I just select these ones in the middle and yeah, I just select these ones. Four, um, and then I add the other one to them. Okay, so now we have our shattered uh, object in the right place. We don't need that standing object. Um, we just have to do the timing. You see that uh, the the shattering starts too early. So I just have to go through camera, select camera, our own camera. Oh, was I 
Okay, I just... I think I have broken the camera. That's why you have to lock the camera. Uh, I press Alt and Z to, to undo the camera. Alt Z, Alt Z. We need our own camera. Sorry, my bad. Uh, uh, we do the camera again, so I just press 4 and readjust. I go to the beginning, readjust the table with. I can select, uh, I press 5 and then go to the sh shading and x ray as well. Uh, yes. Yeah, that's where it was. So, just to avoid that, I select the camera and then here I lock my camera. Lock the selected. So the camera is uh, locked. So uh, you see that the heating happens at frame. So where it is frame uh, seventy one. So I can select that. Um, table alemic file so if I press ctrl a you will see that there is a alembic time or what was that uh, destruction alembic okay so there's destruction table destruction alembic node and it has an offset I can say 71 so at 71 One, two, seventy-one. Oh, I think seventy-one is two. So let's go seventy. Yeah. So this is the time that. So basically, that's where it should start. Let's say fifty-five. Oh no. Uh, 65 no 68 67 yeah so basically let, let's see uh, I'm gonna hide this ball so this is basically this is what would happen so we start at frame uh, 40 I'm gonna start from 40 and uh, let's yeah 42 f yeah so he just does bang here wow it's cool so let's let's uh, you can you can make some play blast go to the um, attribute and make a play blast um, unfortunately QuickTime is not installed so I just make a play blast to make sure if the animation works fine when the animation works fine then we start uh, lighting and then rendering and then go to the compositing and compositing everything so the animation seems fine I wish I would have predicted his his uh, so because he so when he it's not just his uh, palm hand palm is uh, it's more than that his elbow is also involved his forearm is involved so if I would have one larger object to hit that part then uh, we would have seen like cracking here so like it breaks from that part very nice so but that's not bad for now okay so let's render it um, 
what we have to render it so what you can do you can open uh, the same frame uh, where it was I'm gonna move uh, the the JPEG file the image sequence yeah uh, these are extra we don't need them I'm gonna move this image sequence into project folder okay uh, so I just opened the first frame so I use that as a, a reference for lighting and rendering so I just keep looking at it and then so if, if I look around I need I see that the light comes from that side so this shadow is says a lot about light so I turn on the um, so what we have to do we have to make this table look like that one so I save that one I make sure we are on redshift and then uh, it's 1080p resolution um, I just add a quick uh, light dome light and I render that as a just as a test so um, so this table doesn't look like that table at all so we have to start to get there slowly um, so what we do I just uh, First of all, I say that for the light, I, we don't need to see the background environment. Second of all, I just like, so let's, what I did, oh my god, okay, uh, I'm gonna, Um, there's a tool that is very useful and it's called uh, Windows Windows uh, keep on top or something keep on top What was that? Always on top. It's it's called always on top because I want to hold this uh, always on top I just want to keep that image always be there uh, just download that one okay it's downloaded now I just need to extract it. So you see that uh, this is when you extract it. This is what you see. You just double click on that, and it gets added in the in this corner here. And since then, um, let me open Maya. Uh, you just open what you want and press Control Space Bar. So like I just keep that here in the corner and then I press control the space bar from now on whatever I do oh, oh whatever I do it's always on top this one hello okay that's all right so now I have to make this um, this table to look like that almost you don't need to to, to make it look like that like that exactly so first of all um, instead of so I go to, to the shaders is so you see this is a shiny shader I'm gonna uh, bring this in Lambert 3 which is the the one that uh, is for the top I use a, a redshift shader I use redshift material here and I call that table top um, I'm gonna save the video for now because uh, yeah so and then I keep recording the rest in the second part